Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Can sadaqah actually stop bad from happening and what is the reality of sadaqah? I think it's immensity can't be understood. So I think it was in Surat Al-Munafiqeen 63 which is one of the nines that was in Rajab. The immensity of the secret of Rajab, the month of Allah is dressed by Surat Al-Munafiqeen. And I think in Surat Al-Munafiqeen it describes Ayatul Kareem that when somebody died, they went into the Divinely Presence and they asked Allah let me go back, let me go back now and give all my wealth away so that I can become from Salihin. So Allah draws our attention to that when somebody dies, they're not going to ask Allah, can I go back and make my prayers? Because the prayers is, is a different reality. They're not going to ask, can I go back and make one more hajj? So they're not asking those usul, but what they are asking and Allah is drawing our attention to it, the one whom judges, the one we should be fearing is that when they die they come and the only thing they ask is, Ya Rabbi let me to go back and give all my wealth away. So that I can become from Salihin. Allah even gives then a title for the one whom achieves these realities. So the immensity of giving from what Allah has given to us is the establishment of the entire character and faith. Our Islam means submission. Our submission is that we came into a house only as a servant of Allah not to steal its forks and knives and think it's ours and we're going to leave. So when we live our life thinking it's just mine, I can do whatever I want with it, that's the equivalent of someone coming into the home and stealing all the silverware and thinking they're running out. But nobody's left this world with any of those things, you leave the world empty-handed. So that you are merely a custodian for this wealth and you use from it what you can, you give to others of what they need and you have a flowing fountain and a reality of the flowing fountain. But those whom they keep everything to themselves, they're not using the system Allah had envisioned for them and wrote for us that you are your brother's keeper. By taking and by what you have and what you give, you support the entire system of those whom are in need. And the wealth that people have from an energy standpoint has a tremendous amount of dirtiness and negative energy. And when somebody takes their wealth and puts it on to their lives, you take with it all the filth and negative energy of all that money and where it came from. And now they even found physically the money is probably the most filthiest thing you can touch with all sorts of fecal matter, bacteria and, and sickness. This is because Allah giving ishara. So then the people whom take money and they don't give sadaqah, they don't give their zakat, they don't give from what Allah gave to them, they begin to poison themselves and they become the source of all bacteria and badness. That's why it's zaki, it means to be purified. So the system in which Allah has written is that which you're accumulating makes you sick unless you clean that money. And you clean your money by giving a portion of it out so others eat and others prosper. That why the largest movement of money on this earth right now is zakat. Ya SubhanAllah that the two billion Muslims that follow the way and example of Sayyidina Muhammad because this is Allah's system. The largest movement of money on this earth is zakat. So it means the immensity of the faith and if it done correctly it can feed people, it can take care of communities, it can build Islamic centers, it can build universities, colleges and hospitals. It, it, whatever was envisioned by Allah 
is the perfection of, of the way but people take it, hold it and don't spend it, use it or give it. As a result they become sickened by it. So when people become filled with bacterias then these are all the sicknesses and all of the physical sicknesses that they begin to have. So zaki and, and cleaning is immense, immense because of all the spiritual realities. That everything you give in the way of Allah it takes many burdens and sicknesses and difficulties away. Even in the qurban when they give the qurban and they take from the, the blood of the qurban, the blood of the qurban washes away many, many sicknesses and difficulties. And that's why the end of the year on the hajj Allah describes that it was a immense, immense uh, ransom. Ransom, ransom. That how Allah took all of the sins of the year, will take them all away with just the act of the qurban. And Allah is describing how it's immense. So you can imagine then how it's stamped with that immense validity that all the sins of a year are washed away with the qurban of hajj because that's the pinnacle of faith in which Allah says, okay you didn't make it the way I wanted you to be, you didn't reach the stations I wanted you to be but by giving that qurban and the feeding of people that is the benefit of that, that animal sacrifice it will be written for you all the sayyat and sins to be put upon the animal and you to be washed and purified and clean inshaAllah. So Allah's, Allah has given so much immense blessings to the nation, so many ways to be safe from difficulty on this earth and in the hereafter. We pray that Allah will give us more and more of that reality and understanding and the, the faith within the heart to act upon those realities inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam How can one hear himself? Are there steps I can take to hear myself? I find it hard to focus on meditation. Ni inshaAllah you have to email us on helpme at nurmuhammad.com on the steps because you should be connecting your heart, you have to be in wudu, you have to have your taweezes, you connect your heart, you play salawats. So that you feel the, the ruhani, the, the, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad around, you visualize the light of the shaykh. So it's all these steps that have to be slowly, slowly put together in which you can begin to get that dress and that light. The more you lock into that light and you begin to feel the fires and the light of the shaykh dressing, then the more that light comes to you, more of your consciousness and understanding of what you're supposed to do and, and who you are. Without that fires dressing you, then the overwhelming negativity that we have from dunya, it blocks all of these senses because the heart is being blocked. So we said, this is the house of Allah has to communicate to the servant. But when the body is so busy preoccupied with dunya, they don't hear anything from the house of Allah very little, enough to at least be coming and watching. But as soon as you meditate then the fires of the shaykh is like a satellite, that that light comes with an extreme amount of energy. That energy hits and begin to burn away all those whom are trying to block the house of Allah and ashab al feel. That's why you can, if you're having difficulty with your heart, we've given in other tafsirs, you recite uh, seven times Surat al-Feel because Surat al-Feel is about Allah defending your heart. We have that tafsir out that uh, Surat al-Feel is that Allah describing the heart of the believer. Anytime Allah talks about the Kaaba and mentions any reference to the Kaaba, it's the heart of the believer. But that's Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah that Allah will send the angels to Help these devils that are trying to block and to interfere with the house of Allah InshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Forgive me for my lack of understanding but when writing down the knowledges and salawats how will they help us in the grave? By writing? 
Shamba. The minute you write, you change your destiny. Because these knowledges are, are knowledges from the oceans of power. So right now for example person coming with just regular life, their kitab, kitab kiram al katibi the, the angels, the noble scribes, they're noble because they're waiting for something from the heavens. But everybody's book is just they did good, they did bad and their good was… It, it, Allah knows what their good was but maybe they prayed, they did some basic things in life. So the good probably very small, they did bad, they did bad, they did bad and Allah doesn't, doesn't mind what faith they are, He still holds them to account of what they should have been. So then they just writing bad, 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 little bit of good, bad, bad, bad. You can tell then the rizq of that person is based on what's written. The destiny of that person based on what's written and then the whole character and what Allah is going to write upon that person based on what's being now written in that book. When it's all bad everything becomes difficult. So when you sit and listen to realities then the angels now when you write as soon as you move your hand the angels will write. If you're just listening. The angels only write that you sat and listened in their association. But what you're trying to do is get the haqqaiq from what the shaykh is talking to be written in your kitab. As soon as you write it with your hand, you move your hand, the angel now is writing the haqqaiq on your book. And these are not haqqaiqs of a normal scale, these are the Muhammadan haqqaiqs means they're in levels of uloom, the highest levels. And at some of the teachings even above the station of angelic understanding in, in the Wi-Fi and the Muhammadan Wi-Fi. So means these uloom and this knowledge of, of the awliya it's not something normal. So when this type of knowledge hits the book then everything begins to change because now the angel at an angelic reality is writing in a book immense haqqaiqs that are no ego involved because the angels are writing it. As a result the book becomes very heavy, very heavy with angelic lights and Divinely grace and as the person is writing, writing, writing now Allah begin to change everything upon that person. Because the angels now are with immense tajalli, then Allah will begin to change the sustenance because now the soul of that person has been dressed with a different reality. They are custodians now of this Muhammadan haqqaiq and as a result Allah begins to even change their sustenance, their dress and all of their nobility because their station is above the kiram al-katibin because they are the scribes of a Muhammadan haqqaiq means wa laka al-karana bani adam is that the bani adam his station if he achieves can be higher than the station of angels because the angels they just obey Allah Those whom left the dunya and moved towards akhirah and haqqaiqs their station becomes very high as a result of these realities and these dressings. Allah begin to change their sustenance because now they require the sustenance of a noble scribe. The light of their souls are changing, everything is changing and that's why we have that qisa that with your, with your pen you changed all my destiny. Because the knowledges that the shaykhs have that they begin to convey it is at the level of the soul. So imagine then the salawats, the uloom, all these realities they're dressing they're dressing the soul, they're dressing the book and as a result of going into the graveyard completely different soul with a com completely different destiny, nothing even comparable. So that's why I said even on your scale and there are many qasa of awliya that the, the scale of somebody with, with all the amal in the world is uh, nothing compared to with just written, La ilaha illallah, what would Allah value? that dhikr and that achievement and all these practices. There's no way to understand what Allah will give of these blessings. 
So our life was then to write these realities so that it became our reality. And as a result our books were changed, the angels were changed, the soul was changed. As a result that person walking on this earth is from the noble scribes carrying the Muhammadan haqqaiq. Imagine what type of lights are continuously dressing upon them, that's why we're teaching all this love that Allah has. So when somebody is, is a vessel of that love that carries with them all these realities Imagine then what type of lights are dressing them, accompanying them. When, when the hadith of knowledges and seeking knowledges, Prophet described that the one whom takes a path towards knowledge is taking a path towards paradise. And all the birds in the sea, all the birds in the sky, all the fish in the sea, all of creatures are praising that servant until they're leaving this world. So it means it's the immensity of seeking Divinely knowledges and to fulfill Allah's request for us and for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is not something that can be understood. So it definitely changes your dunya. And then imagine the lights that you're, you have now in the Qab as a custodian of the Muhammadan haqqaiqs inshaAllah. As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, this path is to become nothingness, can we act on desire to do business as its sunnah or is this deception because business today is about material and in the east is hard to network or trust? Yeah, no everywhere the, you have to do your business, your school, your work, all of these things. It's not about sitting just uh, and you're doing your zikr by yourself and, and not able to eat. The whole khalwa that anjuman is a, is a system in which you have to be amongst people but to keep your heart with Allah with Sayyidina Muhammad and that's the struggle. You know to avoid a candy store is one thing but to be trained to go into the candy store and not eat all the candy to make yourself sick is a different training and that's what this life is about. Is that either you're a slave for dunya and you're then a slave for dunya and that's Sayyidina Umar Farooq or dunya is a slave for you. So he said that dunya has to be a slave for you, not that you be a slave for dunya and you're carrying the dunya on your head and you can't think or do anything but the dunya. But that when you balance yourself and Allah open for you then dunya is a servant to you and you are a slave to Allah so that that order is kept and the understanding is kept. And Sahabi Kiram as a result of the correct order they conquer the earth, they spread Islam everywhere by means of trade. So as they were trading they were building masjid so they were not just going there say, oh no this is just for the money now I go back, I'll go back to Medina and pray. Wherever they went they spread Islam, they built their centers, built masjids, everything. So alhamdulillah we struggle hard and struggle in the way and inshaAllah Allah to give us that balance and that uh, firmness within our faith inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Um, work environment gets me to talk excessively, how do we keep mm. the silence? I feel I've become a chatterbox. Yes put a, put a lollipop in your mouth. We would say rock but people will choke. <laughs> so at, at work try to put a lollipop in your mouth as a reminder that you, you have to try to control talking. And then that talking is just gossiping and, and, and nonsense and useless talk that generally will darken the heart. So the, the, this way is based on being gracious but really keeping quiet. So many people say, you're a very quiet person, that's good. So you learn just to sort of keep quiet and, and keep to yourself, do the work, work hard and uh, avoid the gossip and the bad character of other people because the character of people are pushing us and pulling us into environments. And that's, that's the training, the one who can abstain then gets more reward from Allah As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah What is the spiritual remedy for lower back pain? Can you enlighten us? 
lower back pain is the, the one that we, we've, we've talked to many times is because the feet are carrying the electromagnetic energy of the earth and the heavenly tajalli that tanzil rahmah is coming down upon the, the heart and the reality, all the clashes within the stomach. So as a result of the energy clashing within the stomach and the energy then hitting the lower back area, the stomach area has problems, the lower back area that's why then from the belly button that's where the energy is clashing and if you go to the other side of the belly button those vertebrae are the ones that are most in difficulty and mostly at the clinics of back pain and, and, uh, and clinics for pain because of the, the energy of the material world that moving so much up the person. So the energy of the ta'weez, the energy of the, the prayers, the, the secret of wudu that don't lose your wudu, keep your wudu at all times. Wudu is not only for salah, wudu is to be kept at all times otherwise the energy just goes all over the body and destroys everything. And you go back home with leg pain, back pain, everything because these shayateen and jinn were all over the person. As soon as they keep their wudu it's a shield. So anyone who has an energy feeling they feel all the negative energies coming to them after they wash and after they, 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 they use facilities. So you have to keep the system of washing and uh, all the practices and, and all the energy training. And then at home washing when you go home depending upon the different work and the exposure you have to people is then to go into the shower, meditate that all the negative energy to come off and that to cleanse oneself of these difficulties inshaAllah. And that way by controlling that energy you inshaAllah carry less of a severe attack and less sort of burdens. And be careful of where you go, that if you go to too many places which may have heavy burdens and you begin to try to carry it or your body will try to carry it and it's not capable and then again difficulty comes and back pains come, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah I read in an article on the website that when shay shayateen attack a person he would be unable to pray or to even stand up for a prayer. Also I read in another article that if we try to treat that person we ourselves will get sick. I was wondering if that happens and if that mistake has been committed and as a result someone has got sick that he can't even go to the mosque now. What should be done in that scenario? even if putting Naqshbandi Taweez is not helping. Yeah, I don't know if that's our article or you, you just read that in any article. So wherever you read it from we have to ask those people. So in our articles it's pretty… Our, we're pretty thorough in, in describing if, if you're under attack and the energy and the negative energy and the negative energy begins to influence somebody not to pray because it's overwhelming negative energy. So the, the positive energy within us leads us towards positive actions. When we become overcome by negative energies we begin to say, oh I'll, I'll be late for the prayer, oh I'll miss the prayer, oh I don't want to go to zikr tonight, oh I won't go this week, I won't go that week. And then before you know it yes they've sort of come so much into somebody that they've pushed them away from any source of light or any way to… to receive a najat and a salvation and that's what shaitan is trying to do is isolate the person and take them for themselves. So anyone whom isolates themselves from awliya they have uh, cut off a huge ni'mat and mercy from Allah So the association is so easy that just clicking on the association and the zikr then to begin to clean and begin to purify and then look and you know par communicate with that zikr, participate, meditate that when the zikr is taking place to that it comes into the heart, comes into the home and begins to clear that energy out inshaAllah. And as much as you can you go into sujood and meditate that Allah to take away any type of negativity and then always a strong foundation in the tafakkur because everything is being taught, its basis is in sitting and meditating and connecting the heart. If you don't connect the heart then you're losing a lot of the energy that could be coming to defend ourselves against these negativities inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.